formerly known as North Carolina Motor Speedway, this D-shaped track, just over a mile long, plays host to round three. Welcome to The Rock. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Eliza Bethel alongside Pete Ruzik. Pete, how you doing tonight? Eliza, I am back just like The Rock. And what a great race this is going to be. A lot of these guys were talking about some loose race cars turning tight race cars turning around race cars as long as these guys can do their best to keep the rear end digging and the front end pointed in the right direction i think they're gonna have a phenomenal race and we're gonna have a great time calling it as well how are you I i'm doing good it's gonna be a heck of a race like you're saying i'll tell you what uh these guys you know they you can already see it jose ruiz he's already losing it coming off the corner <laughs> this is a bumpy track it is loose coming off the exit if you overdrive it so tonight we're gonna have to watch these guys how they take the corners um are they gonna take it high you can go low high mid corner so i think we're gonna see a lot of guys going to I think if you're going to go three, you've probably maybe lost your mind just a little bit because this track is so crazy, but it's going to be a fun one. And it's so fun to drive. It is a lot of fun to drive, but you got to really watch out for those double and triple wides, though, because this track is also extremely bumpy. You get on that bottom, the middle side, you hit that bump wrong. You get sent up track just a little bit. You could cause the big one. And we've seen those a couple times already this season. You don't want to have to do it at a great retro track like Rockingham. Yeah, we have a couple of guys already out on the track doing some qualifying. Justin, he is already uh, fastest, one of the fastest in practice, along with Josh Taylor. So I'm, I'm looking out for these two tonight. Justin, we saw him last week have a phenomenal race with a heartbreaking ending. So I, he's out here for um, a, a comeback race. I want to see him do well, and I think tonight with how he's looking, it could be his night. Yeah, Justin Anascock, he is a contender in anything that he pilots, whether it's a next-gen, Xfinity, truck, whatever it is. And I, I've known the guy for years, like, we, like we've like we talked about a few times now. I'm waiting for him to, to just kick through that door, grab a W, grab some momentum, and really push on as the season progresses. I'd love to see that guy in the championship, but in a very, very strong way. Absolutely. I want to give a shout out to you guys in chat. Chloe, we have Honeycut who's driving out here for FTR. He says, go FTR. Savage, I appreciate you guys showing up. Hope you guys are having a great night. So far, Flickcroft, it looks like he's got the fastest time out there. And just like that, Justin in that four machine, he is already 24.33. So that's going to be a top of the chart Josh Taylor, who was fastest in practice, he's a 24-35, tied with Tom Flitcroft, sitting P3 so far. And you got Andrew Wisdom in fourth and Riley Rosenbrook in fifth. Yeah, right now, all the way back through the top nine are within the 24-second the bracket from the 24-34, like you just mentioned, for Justin Aniscock, all the way down to actually now make that, that, make that the top 10 as Jarrett Cardwell puts that number 12 in that number 10 spot. So everybody in the top 10 in that 24 second bracket. Uh, so it's going to be really tight. I can't, or these times rather, looking uh, to be pretty tight. These cars really loose. So I have to see how this all pans out. But as that scoring pylon on the left-hand side of the screen continues to scroll through, you see these times get better and better. And also Eliza with just Nanscock's second lap, it goes to show that this track heats up a little bit as they get these uh, these things wound up a little bit more. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, let's go on board with some of these guys and see just how bumpy it is. I mean, it's pretty crazy, but I want to give a shout out to Jordan McGraw, who made his way up to a top three so far in qualifying. We're on board with Mr. Jimmy Cocker, and you can see him running that midline, taking it to the outside, back down low. And we'll see what he can do. He might be coming to his uh, pull down lap. We'll see. But yeah, some of these guys will take a low, some up high. It just depends on where you're more comfortable with. I'm kind of curious to see how they will drive it in race because it can be very, very loose coming off the exit. And with those bumps, it is not a pretty sight when you lose control. No, not at all. I see you flipping through some of the uh, some of the guys and watching from their uh, from their onboard, from their, their uh, cockpit shot. And 
yeah, the, these bumps are absolutely nasty. That's what I was talking about, about running two and three wide. You're really going to have to, you're really going to have to be careful. Oh, absolutely. Doug, I see you out there. He says, go honey cut. I know. I hope he does well tonight, along with the rest of these drivers. It's going to be a lot of fun, but uh, qualifying. We have just under about 40 seconds left. Justin so far in the lead. Tom Flitcroft in second. Jordan McGraw in third. Uh, Josh Taylor in fourth. And all four of those, all three of those guys, I should say, have the same exact time. So that goes to show you how close it is. Brendan Book, Luke Allen, and Riley Rosenbrook, all three of those guys have the same time. So times are very close. The racing is going to be very, very tight. I think we might see a few cautions tonight, Pete. I think we are, and if it, if it is this tight, I mean, we're talking like Daytona drafting kind of uh, kind of pushing and, and shoving, but I don't think it's going to be that. I think as the, as the race goes on, this track is not only historically great for great racing, but it loves to chew up tires as well, Eliza. So these guys are going to have to really watch. I was telling uh, Josh Taylor when I was going through kind of wishing everybody good luck, I said, hey, man, I have no doubt you're going to get out to that lead. But when you do kind of get into that race management mode, like I've said before, don't worry about getting 20 seconds ahead. Just get ahead, protect your line, protect your lead, but watch wearing out your stuff. And, and you never know, it might even be able to save a little bit of fuel as the race goes on that could be needed as well. Absolutely. And while we're out here, I want to take a look at the race analysis tonight for Rockingham. We're going to have 150 laps, so we have a lot of laps on the board to make up some moves or lose some spots, so we'll see how these drivers do. Of course, there's going to be no fast repairs. You have damage to that car, you're going to have to bring it down pit road, try to repair it. For stages, the stage lengths are going to be 35, and then we have another 35, and then the final is going to be 80 laps. So. I'm not sure that we're going to have to pit for stage one and two. It just all depends on their strategy. We definitely will have to pit in the final stage. And tire sets, we're going to have four of those fresh Goodyear tires. Boy, I tell you, I, I hope we only have four cautions or under because every time these guys go down pit road, they will want a brand new set of tires. I can imagine that with on, with uh, some really, really worn, uh, beaten up tires. Again, by this track surface, they're going to want those Eagle feel goods every possible chance they get, but they're going to have to really watch the restarts. They're going to have to watch getting into the turns on the first lap. It's going to be really, really slick. We're going to find out who has learned the most throughout practice, qualifying, and now this warm up session. Doug, I appreciate you out there. He says, hello to Frozen Repeat, the best two on Twitch. Much love to you. That. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, Warm up, definitely underway, getting ready to go to the race. But man, oh man, I'll tell you what, so far the first two races, what I've noticed, Pete, is that the chaos kind of happens uh, right before the stage is going to come out. So I think that we've ended most of our stages under caution a lap or two early. So these guys are really, really racing uh, for those points the bonus points that they get. If you're in the top 10, you're going to get those bonus points. Uh, the first one who crosses the line is going to get 10 bonus points, and the 10th place car will get one bonus point. So I think that's where we're going to see a lot of chaos. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you think back um, a, a few years in, I believe it was maybe the year that Martin Truex Jr. won his championship. He was winning stage after stage after stage after stage. I mean, nobody could take the guy down. And he went on and, and, and won his, uh, his season-ending uh, championship. They are worth so much. If you think about it, the, the bonus for winning a race, I believe that's pretty close as well. So if you, can, if you can get on up there, win a couple stages, and win the race, you're just walking away from that place with all kinds of momentum and really holding your head high. Um, and at the end of the year, when everything is reset, because last year we didn't have a playoff kind of a kind of a situation, it's uh, it, it's it's all new. Everybody's got to be greedy, get what they can before maybe they have their own bad race and they've got to fall back on those points that they gained uh, in previous races. 
Yeah, we've definitely added the next level of competition out here. So stages, I mean, these guys are going to be so competitive trying to get every position that they can. And we've seen it um, coming to the stage ends where these guys are going for it all. And it usually ends up in a little bit of chaos. I'm kind of curious what we're going to see at Rockingham. You can't abuse these tires. If you do, there's going to be uh, complete chaos. You're going to lose your car and probably someone around you as far as damage goes to their car. So they are gonna have to try to maintain some consistency and save those tires. That's gonna be really, really hard to do tonight with how bumpy this track is. All right, Eliza, we're getting down to about 30 seconds to go before we set up the grid. Gonna put you on the spot. Who you got for tonight? I'll tell you what, Josh Taylor's looking pretty good out Ooh. there. So uh, I like what he's doing, but I'll, I, I got to go with Justin, man. I, he was so strong last week and didn't it didn't go his way. I think tonight is night. I, I tell you what, I was actually going to say the same thing, but t since you took uh, Justin Ascock from me, it's kind of funny as he's out there in chat as well as under uh, NNR route. He says, hi, guys. So not only is he feeling pretty good, but he's kind of checking in on the stream, seeing if we're talking about him. Rowdy, don't let that go to your head. But <laughs> uh, hey, man, good luck out there. Um, yeah, Eliza and I both pulling for you tonight. Absolutely. Doug says that nine car is beautiful. I'll tell you what, I like it too. Got a little spice on the side of that car, but here we go, getting ready for the race. We're gonna have to bring up this grid here and see what we can do with this. But uh, yeah, the session changing over and we have Justin Anasogak, uh, I hope I said it right, in that yep. four machine with the outside is gonna be Tom Flitcroft in the eight car. In row two, we're gonna have Jordan McGraw in the 34 with Josh Taylor to his outside. Row three is going to be Andrew Wisdom with Brendan Book and P6. And uh, row four, we're going to have Luke Allen in seven. And he's got those lucky sevens going right now. So good luck to him tonight. On his outside, we've got Riley Rosenbrook. And in row five, we're going to have Steven Maggio in that 51 machine with Brody Falaker to his outside. All right, Jimmy Cocker in that number 11, sitting number 11. So, hey, we'll have to see if uh, all that is a great omen and the, the race goes well for him. Philip Bridgman in that nine to his outside round out row number six. Row seven looks like Jeff No in that TJ's team number 14 starting 13th with John Honeycutt for team FTR starting 14th. 15th, Joe Turley in the 97 with Jose Ruiz in the 23 sitting 16th. 17th, Jeremy Kramer in the 26 with Matt Gale in the 67 to round out row number nine. Row 10, Eliza, is JCX 12 or Jarrett Cardwell in the 12 with Dylan Robb in the 16. In 21st, we're gonna have Jonathan Jurgens Meyer with Jacob Palmer to his outside. Francis Hamilton gonna be P23 with Joe Berg in 24th. And in 25th, we're gonna have Andrew Sanford in that 37 with Connor Cunningham uh, in that three machine. 27th is going to be Mike Campbell in that 71 with Chuck Cody and P28. And last but not least is going to be Kevin Dallator and that 92 machine and P29. Absolutely. 29 Xfinity Series drivers ready to tackle the rock. It's going to be a great race. I tell you what, that top five looks extremely, extremely stout. Um, I think we could see some try to run away, but if they're smart, Eliza, and I know a lot of these guys are, they're going to conserve, 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 save the tires, but let's go racing. Yeah, I'm kind of curious. Are they going to start off aggressive, or will they conserve? We're about to find out as we get ready to head green for 150 laps at Rockingham, and let's take it through the finish, start, finish line here. Already the seven car stepping out the back end completely coming out from under him He's gonna lose a few spots right at the start stripe uh, Looks like goes well, side by side for about P2 gonna settle that back in first five cars all nose to tail Yeah, Jordan McGraw is gonna be in second out there fantastic start for him with Tom Flitcroft in third and then for uh, Fourth we're gonna have Josh Taylor these guys are going to start to go side by side. You can see it back here. We'll see if we can't take a look. The one, we have the five and the 86. That is Brennan Book and Riley Rosenbrook. That is going to be for eighth and ninth, and they start to go single file. Absolutely right. Our 
Brendan Book in that uh, that target number five, kind of bringing back the days of Juan Pablo. Right behind him is going to be the 86, uh, as you said, of Mr. Rosenbrook. Brody Fowler switching up numbers on me. Was always traditionally the number one car. Back to the 42. Underneath him is that seven. That seven sliding back a little bit. Lost four spots as Caution's out. Looks like Dylan C. Rob might be involved. Let's see if we can find out what happened to him. Oh, you can already see it. He's just going sideways right there. Just going straight up into the wall. So unfortunate to see with that. Let's see if we can back it up. And uh, it's just one of those things. I'll tell you what. Like I said, it gets loose coming off that exit. If you're overcharging that car and uh, on the throttle too much or too quickly. See what happens and here. He really tried to really tried to save that thing. It was drifting for a good while. Then, it, unfortunately, it just went up, tagged the outside wall, kind of like uh, next-gen days of old. Uh, but the good news is, Eliza, not too many other cars uh, made contact. I think maybe the three of Connor Cunningham might have got a little bit of a scrape, but not too bad. Yeah, his right side, some damage on that front uh, piece and then on the side panel, but not too bad. Hopefully, we can get him back out here pretty quickly, but uh, Justin will be leading us back to green Jordan McGraw in second, Tom Flitcroft in third, uh, Josh Taylor in fourth, and Steven Maggio. He's going to round out that top five. And if you see this, there's no way. I, for me, I'm not coming in, Pete. How about you? No, not at all. Way too early. I know I said earlier, you know, I hope we only have four cautions because then they could take those sets of tires and we could roll on. But it's no, it's way, way too early. I think those cars that we see down on pit road for 80 something seconds, 20 something seconds. I think that is all repair. I don't think that was enough damage except for maybe the 16 for, you know, if we're talking meatballs again. Uh, but um, I, I think some somebody got some some minor scrapes like again, like the three and he's just fixing up a little bit of damage. Yeah, with a few takers for pit road, Francis Hamilton, Jacob Palmer, uh, Mike Campbell, and then, of course, Connor and Dylan. Those guys went into pit, but Justin, who says, uh, no, no, double cursed. He's out here currently sitting first, and <laughs> I'm going to knock on some wood because I definitely do not want to jinx him, but, man, oh, man, he was looking so solid last week. And let's not forget about Daytona. I yep. uh, just had a great car out there. So tonight, come on, Justin, it's your night. <laughs> Yeah, Daytona, he had Brian McCann really pushing him at the, that green-white checker, and he uh, he congratulated uh, Brian McCann and said, hey, he ran the race right. He didn't try to wreck me coming to the line, nothing like that. Uh, he, he, it was all, you know, in fair style. And, uh, yeah, tonight could be could be Justin's night. Talking about the, the guys that came on down pit road, they're, they're just mere seconds. So that was pretty much just topping the fuel off coming on back out never know could be a fuel mileage game but not necessarily with the uh with the stage break so maybe just trying to keep the car heavy uh we have a couple people asking about john honeycutt who's currently sitting p13 you see him out there in his nintendo machine that is a, a paint scheme he made based off a drawing he used to do back in the day so great to see him great out flag. there Green flag, Eliza. Four is the first one on that loud pedal. Everybody else stacked up behind him, and that four already has a two to three car length advantage. Yeah, how about that? I mean, we already have two wide for P2. Jordan McGraw going to have a nose out, and he's going to go right in front of Josh Taylor. Meanwhile, Jimmy Cocker is going to sneak in right behind Josh Taylor. And once again, we have side by side between uh, Jimmy Cocker and Tom Flitcroft, two by two, all the way through. Absolutely. These cars, you know, kind of going with the bumps. It kind of brings back an old term that they used to use a long time ago called porpoising, where the front end would dip and 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 come on back up again. Normally, when you're when you're chasing a car going up the track, these guys really having to ride this roller coaster all the way around the rock. On board with Philip Bridgman, you can see what he's seeing out there. I mean, it's just so incredibly bumpy. You kind of have to make a decision where you're going to go, and you can see him. He lets off the throttle, and that back end kind of fishtails just a smidge. He's able to catch it, but this is where you really have to watch coming out of two. He snags that wall just a little bit, but he keeps moving. 
Yeah, he's got the seven of Luke Allen right underneath him. Luke Allen had a great week going last week. As you see, uh, John Honeycutt right behind him. And then Jeff No right now sitting P14 down one spot. Jeff No was another one. Had a great finish last week. He was all over Twitter talking about trying to build some momentum. But another top 10 here in Shake and Bake. Yeah, you know, uh, we've always joked that He's always got that manual disconnect uh, where something doesn't go right in his race, and it's usually at the start, but I don't want to jinx him either. He's looking strong this season, and you yep. love to see it. Absolutely. Can't wait. Uh, Jeff No, and I, before I move on up to call myself a New Yorker here in a, in a couple months, uh, Jeff No and I are going to meet up somewhere, have lunch, kind of like we, we used to do, and um, spend, uh, spend a little bit of time before I have to call the, you know, before I have to say goodbye to the Carolinas. Oh, that's great to hear. I love it when everyone gets together and uh, has those friendships going. But man, take a look at Justin. He's got quite the lead out there. Jordan McGraw, uh, several car lengths back, but is doing really, really well so far tonight. And I talked to Jordan tonight, and he says, you know, I'm going to be pretty slow. He always says the same thing every week, and I always tell him, you're going to be better than you think. And so far, that's the case for Jordan McGraw tonight. Absolutely, uh, but unfortunately, the, uh, the 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 fastest guy that's out there of the top three is Justin Hanscock. So uh, it's not by much. It's maybe by like the last lap, uh, second and third, where uh, eight one eight one hundredths and then nine one hundredths for for Josh Taylor. So the, the four is still kind of pulling away in that Red Bull machine, but the thirty four in the deuce, they're staying right there with him. We have a couple of guys still on pit lane. Jose Ruiz is going to be one of them. Not sure if he's got some damage or what's quite going on with him, but uh, unfortunate news for him to be in so early. Connor Cunningham and Dylan C. Robb both still out on pit lane. Justin, though, I mean, he's just looking so solid. I'm going to bring up the same thing I brought up before. Let's just make sure that we take care of those tires. He is yep. so consistent, but he always worries me just a bit with those tires. Uh, but, man, he, he knows what he's doing, so I have the confidence that he's going to get it done. Yeah, I mean, right now he is he's flat flying. Uh, he's 1 point, well, now 1.1 seconds over Jordan McGraw. Jordan McGraw was the fastest of the top three. Uh, two laps, or now three laps ago, uh, but... Aniscock, like you said, very consistent, hitting his marks. He hasn't touched that wall, and everybody all the way through at least the top 15, top 20, single file down the back stretch into turns three and four, coming to start lap 17. On board with Josh Taylor, currently sitting P3, and you can just take a look at how much this car is bouncing. I want to take a look at these drivers' lines. What kind of line are they taking? You see Justin goes down way low before he exits. Jordan and Josh pretty much have the same line. Josh Taylor is not pushing it too much, and he's going to take the midline uh, in the next corner. So Jordan taking low. We'll see how that works out in the long run. I tell you what, you got two things going against you on this track. If you're in the dirty air, one is just that. You're getting really, really tight behind the guy in front of you, which could be a good thing with how much these guys were complaining about loose race cars. But at the same time, you're having to put a little bit of extra wheel to keep that car turning. So different lines are definitely your friend. Clear, I'm sorry, clean air as always. Your biggest friend though, and especially at a place like this. Yeah, there's a lot of rhythm that goes in this track and I think that's where these guys are at currently. They're in the rhythm. They know what kind of lines they need to do. They're taking a look at that tire wear, making sure that they're not doing anything too aggressive to hurt those tires and they're just running clicking down those laps but once we get around lap 28 or so we're going to th see things pick up and that is also when they are not allowed to pit two laps before a stage in they cannot take tires or have fuel now eliza you, you know your driver jordan mcgraw a little bit better than most uh is he known for being able to to save his tires save his fuel or is he trying to run flat out to try to catch up to the four and is the four saving enough to really be able to maintain the kind of speeds that you need in order to keep the lead he's normally a really good saver uh for tires so i, I think he's doing all right and i don't see anyone um 
I don't see anyone kind of questioning or trying to push it. So I think they're all in the same wavelength. I think if he was really pushing it, he would start to lose these guys a lot more than he is. But he's looking pretty solid, and I think they're all thinking the same thing. Take care of the tires, and let's not push it just yet. I'll tell you what, the 51, he might have missed that memo. He just went low, talking about Steve Maggio back there in the number uh, five McDonald's machine. He pulled underneath Brendan Book. He's been trying to take that position for about a lap and a half, almost two laps now. He's way down, everybody else up high, and they come off again side by side off of four, crossing that strike. Yeah, they're still side by side. A lot of racing going on with Steven. He's staying down low, though. He's got the one car up ahead, and that's going to be Andrew Wisdom. And behind him, he's got the 42 of Brody Falliker. So he's got a lot of competition around him. That's going to put the pressure on him a little bit, but he seems to be handling it well. And I like what I'm seeing from him so far this season. You see the 42 is going to bring it up high, trying to get around him. He's going to have a battle with this 51 in a second. Yeah, that 42 is like tail whipping the wall uh, coming off of that corner. But now down the backstretch, Thunder Alley backstretch, we'll say. Uh, up high, 51, still low, 51 all the way down on that yellow line. Uh, 42 decides to give him all kinds of room, not necessarily pinching him down. Coming across the start stripe, still side by side. It's about the same in a couple other spots, just ahead of them as well between the five and the one. On board with Brody in that uh, camera view, and I'll tell you what, just bouncing all over the place here at Thunder Alley. 25 of 150, so things are gonna start to heat up just a little bit, but man, they're doing a great job out here, and you can see that five car directly in front. That's gonna be Brendan Book, and he's got Andrew Wisdom, who's made up a couple of spots. Jimmy Cocker, P4, Josh Taylor in third, Jordan McGraw in second, and lean the race. It's still Justin. I tell you, one guy I'm kind of surprised at. He's very, very fast in practice, qualified really well. Talking about 11th place right now, Tom Flickrop sitting back down nine spots in that number eight machine. Not quite sure if he's just wanting to hold on, but if he wants any of those stage points, he's going to have to get, a, get back on it a little bit more. It's a nice-looking Bass, Bass Pro tracker machine. Uh, he's, gonna, he's got John Honeycutt right behind and Luke Allen right ahead. Yeah, very interesting to see. You see these guys going side by side. That's going to be Honeycutt and Tom Flitcroft. So very inter interesting to see. But man, 28 of 150. We're coming down to the wire here for stage one. Bonus points will go out to the top 10 drivers. You want to make sure you got that spot. And that's where it's going to get a little crazy out here. You see Riley Rosenbrook in ninth. We got Luke Allen in 10th. Can Tom try to make up that spot along with John Honeycutt, Luke Allen? He's going to be under attack, but they don't have much time to do it, Pete. Talking about under attack, but not much time. Right now, looking at Josh Taylor, he's been fastest four of the laps, last five laps. He's cut that, uh, that lead between him and Justin Ascock down by three or four tenths over the last five laps. Down to 1.4, 1.5 now. I don't think he's going to have enough time with five laps to go, but Josh Taylor is showing promise in the long run. Uh, we have Jordan McGraw, who is P6 currently. He's going to get a few uh, bonus points here, but he has fallen drastically. He was P2, now he's P6 yep. and still under attack. So that is going to hurt his bonus points going into the next stage, but he's got to take care of that car, bring her on home, cross that line. Another one that wants to cross that line right now, sitting P3, Jimmy Cocker. Uh, he's also uh, he's also up eight spots, so definitely a big shout-out to the biggest mover here so far in stage number one. He's got that 11 motivating, and right now the, the deuce of uh, Josh Taylor. He's got a Virginia Tech machine large in his rear view. Absolutely. Look at these guys still having at it. Justin still leading just over a second, almost a second and a half. So he's still doing really, really solid. Jimmy Cocker in third, Andrew Wisdom in fourth, Brennan Book in fifth, Brody Falliker in sixth. He passed Jordan McGraw, who's sitting in P7, Riley Rosenbrook in eighth, Luke Allen ninth, and John Honeycutt in tenth. And uh, Pete, I did an oopsie here. I thought it was 30 and I'm looking and it literally says right in front of me, lap 35 is the stage. So we still got a couple laps. 
Yep, couple laps to go, and just saw the 51 of Steve Maggio go on up and eat that outside wall coming off of turn number two last time. Completely lost the uh, the, the the back of the car, now missing a, a, an important piece of that car, the entire back end of just history. Justin, he's, uh, he, we have Josh Taylor closing in. 0.84 behind, so that is quickly narrowing down. I'm wondering how much this these tires are wearing down. What are they feeling like out there? You know it's got to be affecting these drivers because I don't see a lot of guys really pushing the envelope right now. These guys are just trying to bring it home in one piece, and it's been a pretty clean stage except for our one caution that was just uh, like two people involved. Yeah, absolutely. The 16 to Dylan Robb, a couple of other guys that kind of made a little bit of contact. But Eliza, that four car, that Red Bull machine, clearly with wings, is going to come across to take the start of lap 36. Yellow stage flag should fly. But Josh Taylor was absolutely running. Justin Anzagok down, and Jimmy Cocker was there as well. Josh Taylor, fastest of the top three, five of the last five laps. I think the four is going to have to figure out what he was doing wrong because the deuce was coming. Yeah, I mean, this is a time where you're going to see a mad rush on the pit road. These yep. guys are going to take those tires, take that fuel, but the top 10, we got Justin, Josh Taylor, Jimmy Cocker, Andrew Wisdom in fourth, Brendan Book in fifth, Brody Falliker in sixth, Riley Rosenbrook in seventh, Jordan McGraw eighth, Luke Allen in ninth, and... John Honeycutt is going to snag a top 10 and a bonus point to boot. There you go. Just outside that top 10. We were talking about him a little bit ago. Tom Flickcroft, 11th. Jonathan Jurgensmeyer in 12th. Philip Bridgman, 13th. Steve Maggio, 14th. Joe Turley in 15th. Matt Gale, Jeff No, Jarrett Cardwell, Jeremy Kramer, and Andrew Sanford round out your top 20. Coming down, pit road safety car is going to let it guide them all the way in. And Eliza, yeah, the, the, it'll be four tires and fuel for everybody. Absolutely. Once these guys get situated, I want to take a look at the points. And this looks like a great time to do so. So uh, let's see if we can bring up those points and what these guys have done so far this season. Looks like Andrew Wisdom is going to be leading the points. He's going to be first in there. Uh, Justin is going to be second in points. We're going to have Jonathan Jurgensmeyer, which we haven't seen him up front. And so far this season, he has been, except for tonight. He's going to be P3. Brendan Book in fourth. Thomas Flitcroft in fifth uh, with 76 points. And we have Francis Hamilton in sixth. And take a look at Jimmy Cocker, who moved up 17 spots. Wow. Uh, yeah, to P7. So huge moves for him with Jeff No being tied for seventh with 61 points. Micah in ninth. And Andrew Sanford going to round out the top 10 in points so far. Yeah, unfortunately for uh, Micah Allard, I don't believe he's actually in the race this evening. But Cody Kalinka, Gale, Rosenbrook, McCann, Ruiz, Honeycutt, Maggio, Allen, McGraw and Mr. Dalator uh, again for the top 20. Dylan Robb, who unfortunately had uh, had a little bit of an issue tonight. Uh, he's sitting 21st in points. He's going to take a little bit more of a tumble. Yeah, unfortunate to see, but man, what a race so far. But Justin is looking so incredibly strong. I almost feel bad for picking him, Pete, because you know uh, the booth curse is definitely uh, a thing. So I'm hoping it's not going to be tonight, but uh, yeah, he's doing great. He's got Josh Taylor uh, right beside him here. Jimmy Cocker coming out third, Andrew Wisdom in fourth, Brody Ka Falliker coming out fifth here, Brendan Book in sixth, Riley Rosenbrook in seventh, and Jordan McGraw eighth, uh, Luke Allen in ninth, and Tom Flitcroft going to start this next stage in tenth. All right, well, one good thing is you see the 23 for Jose Ruiz right in front of the leaders, right behind the pace car. He's going to go ahead and take that wave around. I'm not quite sure if that will get him right back on the lead lap or not. Uh, but, hey, uh, ba baby steps. And, again, we've got, we've got another stage break ahead of us before this race is completed. That will give him or somebody else the option to get back on the lead lap or get a lap back and really try to gain max points before it's all said and done tonight. 
Yeah, unfortunately for Jose, he's on team FTR, but uh, he is down 12 laps. Not what yeah. you want to see tonight. So not sure quite what happened to him, but uh, he'll get one of those back. All right, Eliza, so four, very, very strong. His teammate right underneath him. You see the one of Andrew Wisdom, last week's winner, Jimmy Cocker and Brendan Book. Brendan Book, uh, he's, uh, he's kind of stepped out of the the admin or the uh, up in the up in the, the, the admin tower, uh, helping out to, to, uh, to call these races and any kind of issues that need to be cleared up. He's back behind the wheel, and I think he put out there on, on Twitter not too long ago, he feels like he's back in these cars. Could be a good rebound race for him also. Yeah, you know, he's not a huge fan of the cup cars, so I know it was a, a great thing for him to see that we're going to be racing Xfinity. It was voted in, uh, so these guys are excited. You can see the great, differences great, great. In, with some of them, but here we go back to green, and Justin with another great start. Josh Taylor going to be in second and Andrew Wisdom going to go up high. Got a little bit of a nose out and man, oh man, Jimmy Cocker all over that apron. We got Brendan Book and that five machine up high. These guys are moving right along, Pete. Absolutely. Top three way up on the high side. Josh Taylor stuck down low with the five not pinching down. Two is going to be clear right in front of the 42. The 11 down low. They're the only ones right there side by side inside the top 10. A little bit more action behind them. Taking a look at Brody Fallaker sitting P6. Jordan McGraw, he's right there in seventh. And this is a crowded track. There's not a lot of room to go behind or in front. You can see uh, uh, we're on board with Jordan McGraw looking behind him. He's got Riley Rosenbrook coming off the exit directly behind. He's got Tom Flitcroft and Jeff No, who are teammates. They're going to be right there in the mix, too. Yeah, see Motorsports maybe sharing some information, way to you know hold things at at this track that loves to eat tires, fighting looseness, trying to do what they can to help tighten it up. Maybe a little bit of dirty air for that, but there's a lot of side by side action up front. The fives tags that outside wall, and we man, they are. Uh, Eliza, are you sure this isn't like lap 148? <laughs> You would think it is with how some of them race. And I'll tell you what, you can hear Brennan Book just all over that wall, really pushing this car to the maximum that it can. You see Jimmy Cocker really sending it in down below the one machine. So these guys are, this is a whole new race. I mean, it's almost like we're in three separate races with these stages. Every single uh, stage is another and another portion that you can get a win, let's say, with bonus points and trying to get everything that you can. So these guys, they're going for it. Oh, absolutely. It's like getting a win. It really is. If you can win both stages and the race, you, you come out of here with max points. You feel really, really good about yourself. You know, Justin Anscock, he walked away from everybody earlier. I'm almost wondering if now he's just kind of kind of getting settled in, not really going to look about, look at trying to trying to run away from the field. Andrew Wisdom keeping him pretty close in tow. You see the 11 of Jimmy Cocker who came on strong earlier. Brendan Book's going to take the P4 spot. Brody Fowler back to P5 with Josh Taylor who finished stage one second right now running P6. Yeah, you guys in chat, let me know who do you think is going to win tonight from what you've seen. It's going to be wild to see, but man, the race is still young. 47 of 150. We have a lot left to be had, but man, Justin, I don't know that these guys are not letting him get away uh, as much as they did in the last stage. Take a look at Andrew Wisdom. He is flying through that mid portion of the track, bringing it down low. These guys seem to have a feel for where they need to run, and you see a lot more guys taking that portion of the track in those particular corners. So I, I think they're starting to become a lot more competitive with each other in the stage. It could very well be that, or the four didn't uh, didn't like how he felt late in the run. He saw the two coming. He saw the 11 coming. Maybe he's figured out just going to go ahead and scale it back just a little bit as Andrew Wisdom completely wheels it up off the bottom, out towards the wall. He, uh, he kind of had to steer back to the right quite a bit, and they're double wide behind him. They sure are, man. And uh, Savage says, whoever's in the one, go you. <laughs> that is our two-time champion, Mr. Andrew Wisdom. And let's not forget 
he won it out there in the IndyCar series out on iRacing. So the guy just, uh, whatever you put him in, he's so incredibly strong, incredibly strong on those road courses, but uh, we're learning that he, he's doing phenomenal at the ovals now too. Yeah, he's absolutely phenomenal on the ovals. And when it comes to the first, or I'm not quite sure about the schedule, the only road course, we'll just talk to him at the end. We won't talk about him at all <laughs> during the race because it's going to be uh, he, uh, one, some, one of the tracks where he doesn't care to share any wisdom is those road courses. He is just flat lights out every single race. Eliza, I don't think anybody else has won a road course race in the Shake and Bake Cup or now Xfinity Series besides Andrew Wisdom. He has been the man all, yeah. what, three previous seasons. I believe you're right. Next week, Pete, we're going to have another chance to see if anyone can take Andrew Wisdom down. So we're headed to Road America. It's going to be a fun race. I can't wait for it. And uh, I'm curious, how is Justin on those road courses? I, that I, <laughs> I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, Justin Anscock, just like you know, Brendan Book was last year, Justin Anscock in his uh, Sunday Night League, uh, he's kind of taking the, the, the opportunity to go on up into the tower, kind of keep an eye on those races. So he's not participating on Sunday nights other than in that uh, capacity. So it's been a little bit since I've seen him behind the wheel um, at, at uh, a, a decent road course. But yeah, looking forward to Road America and see how that all plays out. Will Andrew Wisdom make a mistake? Uh, I doubt it. Yeah, yeah, I'm on board with Josh Taylor, and I'll tell you what, he is looking a little more aggressive. He's made up a couple of spots, and uh, I'll tell you what, he's sticking that car wherever he can and trying to get those spots. You can see he's making his way up to the 42 now, but he is looking very strong. Jimmy Cocker is going to be in sixth. Jordan McGraw in seventh, Riley Rosenbrook in eighth, Jeff No ninth. Tom Cliff Croft is going to round out the top ten. Absolutely. Luke Allen right now sitting in that number seven, sitting in the 11th spot, down four spots. Philip Bridgman started this race in P12. Guess what? That's exactly where he currently runs. John Honeycutt in 13th. He's up one spot since this race started. Matt Gale in that 67 back P14. Jonathan Jurgensmeyer in P15. Jarrett Cardwell up three in 16th. One of the biggest movers tonight, Kevin Dallator. He's in 17th, up 12 spots. Steve Maggio in 18th, down nine. 19th is going to be up three spots. Talking about, of course, Jacob Palmer and Francis Hamilton up three in that 48 right now, P20. Yeah, Andrew Sanford is going to be in 21st, directly behind Mr. Hamilton. And Joseph Turley is going to be in 22nd. Uh, Mike Papa Bear Campbell out here in 23rd with Jeremy Kramer, 24th. Chuck Cody in 25th. And then we're going to go down to the lap down cars. Joe Berg in that 93. Jose Ruiz in that 23, sitting P 27th. And Connor Cunningham, uh, unfortunately, 28th with Dylan C. Robb, 29th. Yeah, Dylan Robb still on uh, pit road. But, you know, I got to give this guy a lot of credit. He has not thrown in the towel. He hasn't told his crew. You guys just go ahead and knock off. He's still on pit road. And, you know, trying to trying to get that number 16 fixed up for Team FIWB. We'll have to see how it is when it's all said and done. Uh, we come next, we'll be starting lap 60 next time by out of 150, getting closer and closer to that next stage break, Eliza. Yeah, lap 70 is when it's all going to happen once again. So we are getting much closer as uh, we make these laps go. Lap 60 of 150 and around 68 is going to be no pitting for these drivers. Uh, so we'll see what they can do. They already have the experience of the first uh, first stage here. So we'll see what happens in the next. But we keep talking about Justin. They are not letting him get away. Andrew Wisdom. We've seen him make his way up here, up three spots from where he started, looking really solid. But I'm kind of surprised. Jonathan Jurgensmeyer, who uh, we've seen a really solid season for him. I'm surprised we're not seeing him up here further. Well, I mean, it's, it's a long way to go. He's right now sitting P15 in that 00 Chevrolet. He's up six spots after starting the race 21st. Might see a little bit more out of him as the race goes on. You know, as I think back to some of the some of the, the 
previous races so far this season. He isn't technically uh, you know, up front all race long, uh, but he, he gets there right when it really matters. And uh, again, there's a lot of laps yet to go. Now, you talked about the, the uh, pit road getting closed down with about two or three laps to go. Big, big shout out to Tom Harmon and Brian Pizzicami who decided to sit this season out and help out in the admin role. Uh, with these races couldn't be run without them. Big, big thank you to them. Oh, absolutely. And they said they were joking tonight saying, we're going to be a little busy. It's going to be crazy. But so far, <laughs> these guys are putting on a heck of a show. And Mr. Ramsett, what's up? I hope you're doing well. He says, good race. Wish you were out here, too. Uh, it's always fun with everyone. But uh, Justin Anasogak uh, is doing amazing. Andrew Wisdom, Brendan Book, who is fighting for position side by side. This is for P3. Brendan Book going to go to fourth. And uh, Brody Falliker up seven spots sitting P3. There's the Brody Falliker that I remember moving on up when it really matters and being as consistent as possible. I just need him back in that number one. I don't know what it is about Brody Falker in that number one car for Team FIWB. It all just matched. Otherwise, you got to give him back that car. You got to take. You got to kick Andrew Rizm out of the one. I know those two guys switched, and uh, you know, in the iRacing IndyCar series, we do the first. You know, the number one car is saved for the championship. So I'm not sure if Andrew Wisdom wanted that for as part of his reason. I know that he loved ah. the font, the font, and whatnot. So uh, I know that's a huge thing for him, but man, he, he's looking solid out there. New paint scheme. I'm really liking it. And uh, he's already going for the lead here, Pete. Yeah, I was just about to say, if you didn't, the four up high, the number one of Andrew Wisdom down low. And it looks like the 42 Brody Palliker, he's going to try to get in there also. 42 is going to go ahead and throw it low. Tr going to try to clear the one, just cannot slide it on up. Is he clear? No, he's not. One gives them plenty of room at the last moment, but both now side by side chasing that Red Bull number four. Man, oh man, what a battle for the lead. And then it ended up being a battle for second once again. Brody Falliker and Andrew Wisdom just going back and forth with this battle. We're going to see how it's going to affect their tires, but this stage will soon be coming to an end. And all those bonus points are beginning going out to the top 10. So you want to make sure you are there for the end. Do not do anything to uh, ruin your final part of the race for stage two. You got to bring her home. Yeah, that's what it's all about. If you're as consistent as you can be for 35 laps, you seal the deal uh, for, for stage one. You're coming to, uh, to the end of stage two as well in just about a lap and a half. You, you've earned those points by staying in that position, not really running away from the field this time. I wonder if Justin Anscock saw what happened, like I mentioned before, with the 11 and the two. This time, didn't scoot out to almost two seconds away. He stayed right in touch with the one, and the 42 only ran as fast as, as he had to. Now we're coming to the end of stage number two. If the one or 42 doesn't pass him, which it doesn't look like they will, we got a car up in the wall is going to be able to stay out of the way of the leaders coming through three and four, Eliza. Yeah, I was about to say, we have a lot of traffic up ahead, but the caution should be coming out as stage two uh, is coming to a close and those top 10 bonus caution. points will be coming caution. out. But man, what a stage in that. I do believe that was the 26th car of Jeremy Kramer who uh, kept it up in the wall to let the drivers get on by. So props to him. But man, oh, man, uh, what a race so far. Let me know. Who do you think is going to win in chat? Do you have Justin along with me? Or are you still going to Andrew Wisdom? I know, Savage, you were saying Mr. Wisdom. I tell you, uh, two very, very strong stages by that four. He didn't pull away. Andrew Wisdom, he's up three spots. Brody Falker, he's up seven. Brendan Book uh, finished that stage fourth. Fifth is going to be Jimmy Cocker, Josh Taylor in sixth. Seventh is going to be Riley Rosenbrook. Jordan McGraw brings it home P8. Tom Flickroft ninth. And the last one to pick up a stage point is going to be Luke Allen in that number seven Chevrolet. Luke Allen's been flexing a little bit too here lately, Eliza. I know we have a lot of drivers that are making their way into the top 10. Entire teams are being so consistent out there. I absolutely love to see it, but man, oh man, what a busy 
pit road that we have here and look at that scenery the sky is looking awfully beautiful shining on these cars out there but we're gonna have a couple of cars stay out to try to get uh their lap back jeremy kramer chuck cody so a couple of these guys staying out trying to get those laps yeah and everybody nose to tail going down pit road everybody trying to pull into their their pit stall carrying max speed all the way to their stall not sliding through their boxes also not shorting it gonna get a great launch off of pit road as well looks like tom flickcroft he did just that he had his right rear outside of the box had to pull it in just a little bit more in that second stall and it looks like the four is gonna go ahead and meet and beat everybody off of pit road the one in the 42 came in right behind him leaving him in the same way yeah it looks like jordan mcgraw had an issue on pit road two right behind tom flickcroft so that's gonna definitely affect those two uh, as they struggled in their pit box but just anna, anna sogak is out here in first andrew wisdom in second brody falliker still coming out third brendan book fourth jimmy cocker is gonna be out in the top five Eliza, what do you say we grab uh, the driver of the number four, bring him on up, see how he's feeling, and see what he thinks now for stage number three? Absolutely. I was going to say the same thing. Let's get him up here. Justin, it's repeat up in the booth along with the one and only Eliza Bethel. Bud, two amazing, amazing stage wins for you. Max points so far. What do you think now? 80 laps for stage number three. Can you get it all done? And how are you feeling in that machine? You guys caught me when I was drinking water. <laughs> they scared me. Uh, yeah, we have an all right car. Uh, these guys are definitely better on the long run. I think they're running a different, a little bit lower brake bias. I did, I did push it on that long, that first stage just to see what happens, and I was just kind of just hanging on the last ten laps. But uh, I kind of pushed, scaled it back a little bit, and um, the second stage, but. I, we can make it on this last stage if we don't have a have a caution, so I definitely have to conserve tire there. What was it exactly that you learned between stage one and stage two to uh, to help you with that long run? Uh, just just backing it up, not going as hard. Um, that's why I kind of was kind of close, a little bit closer with everybody there, and then the 42 just came out of nowhere, and and the one, so just got to conserve tires here on the last stage all right buddy good luck i'll get you back on down with the rest of your team keep the rear end digging and keep the front end pointing in the right direction and we'll talk to you later yep eliza what a pilot of that red bull machine he's gonna have the one of andrew wisdom to his inside i we'll have to see if justin ascock can jump on that loud pedal and pull away like he's been brody palak is going to start p3 p4 brendan book p5 jimmy cocker Josh Taylor, Luke Allen, Jeff No, Jonathan Jurgensmeyer, there he is, restarting P9, and then Philip Bridgman to round out our top 10, Eliza. Yeah, these guys are starting to tighten up and getting ready for uh, stage three, the final part of this race. So these guys are going to be very, very close together, trying to get all the momentum they can heading into this final part of the stage. It's so incredibly difficult to pass, so this restart is very important. Green. Well, green flag is out. Stage three underway. Starting lap 76 of 150. We are officially halfway in this race. Is it going to be all green from here? Are we going to have a caution? Only time will tell. Only aggression will tell. It's elbows out. A little bit of a, uh, you know, a short stop here for that bottom line. They kind of stacked up a little bit. You see the 14 going to the wall after some contact with that inside line, but they're still moving very very close out here that's gonna be jonathan jurgensmeyer he's uh in between a couple of cars but they're still off still running and man stage three is underway and it's gonna be a wild one you heard justin say that they can maintain their way through there philip bridgman in that nine machine up into the wall loses a few spots going three wide Jonathan jurgensmeyer right now taking over p8 up 13 spots so far this evening. Eliza, that's why he is where he is in the points because when it all, when all the chips are on the table, the guy knows that uh, he, he's got to really push. Right now with these new tires, it's a little early to, to, to really push, but when the tires are new is also where you got to try to get as much as you can and hope that everybody in front of you is pushing harder than you so you pass them as the race goes on. 
Yeah, you know, you called it. Uh, you know, I was a little concerned. I'm, I wasn't seeing him up here. And you're saying, just give him a minute. He's going to get up here when it matters. And here he is. He's up in the top 10. We still got a lot of racing left. Is lap 79 of 150. But no doubt, he is making his way up here. And uh, he's got two stages under his belt. So he knows how the car is handling. He knows what to expect. This is when he's going to make those moves. And real, I see you out there. I hope you're doing well. And Maddie says that sky was so pretty. Yeah, no doubt. I tell you what, two guys going back to back with Shake and Bake Purple. First one up there was going to be Brendan Book. Just put down a 24-48. And Jimmy Cocker says, oh, yeah, watch Virginia Tech. And on uh, on your next uh, bowl game, he goes Shake and Bake Purple 24-46, the fastest lap so far. And I was seeing a whole bunch of fast laps behind him. You know, 24.65 for Luke Allen, 24.64 for John Honeycutt. Flick crop with a 24.57. A lot of guys hitting their, their uh, fastest lap for the evening. Oh, absolutely. I mean, these guys are really pushing the envelope right now. They know what their car can do. They know what to expect. So this is when they're trying to make up those moves. They're, they have to wash the tires, but there is a little give that can be had right now. But you heard Justin, you can go this entire stage if no caution comes out. I find that so crazy that they can, considering how bumpy this track is and how much it wears those tires. So I, I want to see if that is actually possible and how these guys are going to be feeling in the long run. Yeah, I mean, well, right now, the five of Brandon Book, he is all over the back end of that Red Bull machine. Justin Hanscock puts those left tires just south of that yellow line, had to chase it back up track. Brandon Book checked up just a little bit. 42 of Brody Falker, he's making his presence known yet again. Jimmy Cocker staying right there in P4. A little bit of a gap back to Andrew Wisdom. That is a long line that we see right behind Brendan Book, but Brody Falaker trying to take a peek on that inside, unable to get there just yet, but you know he is going to be working on it. We've seen him so strong these last few seasons, and I love to see that he's up here. This is our first time in the Xfinity car, and I wasn't sure, so how many, uh, sure how some of these drivers would handle this car, but man, Brody is really getting into the feel of this car, and he's doing phenomenal. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of curious about his line. He's all the way down there on the yellow, while most others are up a lane or two, so they're not scrubbing the, uh, the, the tires off quite so much. And of course, just as I say that, he goes three lanes up towards the wall, brings it back on in behind the five. Five falling back off the rear end of the four, just a tad side by side for P2. Yeah, you know, there's a couple of different options. You can run these lines, especially depending on if you're in one and two or three and four. So you can run it high, you can run it low. And it really just depends on what corner and where you're comfortable at. You don't want to lose all your momentum and speed. If you're comfortable down low, you don't want to run it up high. Plus up high, you're going to give away some tire wear. That's something that these guys don't want to do, but we're seeing a lot of drivers midline. Yeah, really. I mean, I was just watching the the one of Andrew Wisdom currently in P5, right where he started with Josh Taylor right behind him. Those guys have been nose to tail, except for on the, the straightaway. It seems like they're choosing different lines. That could be a dirty air issue as they got Luke Allen right behind him. Started seventh in that number seven, like you mentioned, when going through the grid. Could he be rolling sevens all night long? We'll have to see, but a whole lot of single file racing all the way down Thunder Alley. Yeah, I think we're going to see that for a while. Some single file racing, let these cars just uh, get into the groove, get that rhythm, consistency. And then once we kind of click down some laps, then we're going to see the aggression pick up and we might see a caution or two. But so far, let's knock on some wood. This race is very, very clean and a lot of fun. Take a look, the two and the one car. Uh, getting ready to go at it. And this is going to be for P5. That's Andrew Wisdom under attack by Josh Taylor. And then not too far behind, Luke Allen and P7. It's kind of interesting watching the one go into the corners. Josh Taylor either chooses to go just a little bit lower than a one, or if the one moves up, uh, moves his line up, Josh Taylor also has to adjust his line up as well. Clean air 
so key in every single race we go to, except, of course, when we're talking about super speedways. But just trying to do what he can to get a little bit of air on that front left to keep it planted. But again, right in tow. And yeah, you talk about the seven of Luke Allen still sitting in, in P7. He has Jonathan Jurgensmeyer in eighth. Ninth is going to be John Honeycutt and Tom Flickcroft trying to work his way back on up. Currently sitting P10. Yeah, these guys just absolutely flying. Take a look at the single file line all the way through. These guys are busy. And we saw by the time uh, that the final lap came out that Justin was going to have a lot of traffic to move through. So I'm curious, at what lap are we going to see these drivers come across uh, some guys getting ready to go a lap down? It's going to be pretty tight. Yeah, I mean, the, the pace that the four has been setting all night long is 42. Just tried to look underneath, just didn't have uh, the the uh, the roll through the center as they come across to start lap 93. The 42 has been close a few times to try to challenge. As we talk about challenges, Brendan Brooks under challenge by the 11 of Jimmy Cocker. Jimmy Cocker throwing it low, almost making a little bit of contact wheel to wheel. But top two, they're, uh, they're, they're scooting away a little bit because these two are battling. Yeah, that is going to allow these guys up front to get away. We have Jimmy Cocker, Brennan Book, and then Brody Fallacher going to be in second. And these guys are just going to increase that gap if they don't quit battling it out. But it looks like that battle has uh, is now complete. We have Brennan Book in third, Jimmy Cocker in fourth. They will battle another lap. We've got Andrew Wisdom in the top five with Josh Taylor. Six looking on in, and he's got a battle brewing up. Uh, pretty closely it's going to be Luke Allen is going to be right behind but Andrew Wisdom and Josh Taylor they're going at it in a sec yeah these guys have, they've been nose to tail you know line versus line for many laps now but it just seems like the two has not been able to get on by the same thing with the five and the 11 they're still going at it door to door the 42 still kind of stalking the four up front nobody else has led a lap this evening eliza besides that number four for justin aniscock he's got max points in both stages really looking to, tr to score the trifecta come across grab that w make it on up to uh, post-race interviews and uh, he'll be the man tonight. Yeah, and he's also got uh, most laps led and a lap led. So he's got so many points coming at him tonight. That's going to definitely help pad his points in the standings. I, he's just doing phenomenal out here. It's great to have him out here racing in SMB. And uh, man, he's doing a great job. Brody Falaker, super proud of him in his run tonight. Sitting P2 up eight spots from where he started. The night isn't over yet, but coming to lap 100 of 150. Let's keep it consistent, Brody, and we've got a top three finish. I think the only thing Justin Ascock doesn't have this evening, and this isn't a challenge if you're listening, uh, Justin, <laughs> the only thing he doesn't have this evening is the fastest lap. Right now, his fastest 24.53. Only, only two guys have been a little bit quicker than him. Talking about Brendan Book ran a 24.48, right along with Jimmy Cocker, 24.46. So, Justin Anscock right now, third fastest on the evening. But hey, he's great. He, so far, he's gained max points. Yeah, we heard him say that he's trying to tone it down a little bit. He did a little uh, too aggressive driving in stage one. So, I think he's trying to save those tires, do what he needs to do to keep everyone else behind them but not kill the tires and you see Brody Falaker really putting the pressure on him he's going down low while Justin is up high and these guys looking a little loose out there but they are still underway and we've hit lap 100 of 150. Absolutely Justin just absolutely committed to the same line lap after lap that time coming off the corner a little bit of throttle I uh, saw the back end kick out sideways just a tad did not touch the wall, but 42 staying right there. Brody Falker, maybe you know, learning a thing or two from uh, from the way Justin is running this race. But top oh, two really starting to pull away. Right, Caution number two is going to fly. Philip Bridgman looks like he was involved. Let's find out. See if we can find out what happened here. You can see him going down low. Gets a little bit of the apron. Looks all right, but the 48, he's going to lose it on the apron. Nowhere for the nine to go. <laughs> so unfortunate. Kind of weird with the 48, how that happened. You didn't see him go sideways, just straight fine to not. 
Hmm, that that kind of looked like maybe the, the 9 and the 48 made, maybe made a little bit of contact. Like maybe, maybe like the uh, 48, 48 was checking up just a tad. Not a not 100% sure, but um, man, very unfortunate for both. Absolutely. I want to go and board. Yeah, he checks up quite a bit. I wonder, uh, do you think he might have been going into pit road perhaps and uh, Bridgman didn't have time to get out of the way? I'm not sure what happened, but very interesting for these two. Yeah, very. I mean, that that nine had a rapid rate of close on the back end of that 48. Um, but only only those two guys know. Let's go back. I want to see if we can uh, see what happened from Francis, his view. Yeah. He just toned it down. I'm kind of wondering if he was just, in fact, trying to make his way to pit road. And I don't know if uh, he didn't have anything over the mic or what, but really unfortunate to see with that. That's going to bring out uh, our second caution of the night. Everybody down pit road yet again. No surprise there. Working lap 103 of 150. Everybody choosing to use their third set. It looks like the 42 and the four gonna be gonna race off of pit road, but it's gonna be the 42 of Brody Falker to come on up and grab the lead from Justin Anscock. Andrew Wisdom's gonna come off third, Brendan Book fourth, Jimmy Cocker fifth, Josh Taylor, Luke Allen, Jonathan Jergensmeyer, excuse me, John Honeycutt, and Chuck Cody uh, inside the top 10. All right, I wanna have a chat with Brody Falker, see how he's feeling. I don't wanna jinx him. But Brody, it's Eliza in the booth. How you doing out there? Doing all right. All right. We see that you have a great car. How's it feeling tonight? And uh, what do you think on your chances of getting that win? Car feels great. Uh, honestly, feels like the best car in the field. Um, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just, I don't know. I feel confident. That's a good thing. I love to hear it. And you know, we keep talking about your first win is coming here. We're waiting. And tonight would be a great night to make that happen. So I wish you a ton of luck. I don't want to take up too much of your time and uh, keep that rhythm going. And man, you're looking so solid. So great to see it out there. Thank you. All right. You heard it from Brody Falaker. He seems very calm, Pete. He's calm, confident. He knows what he's doing. And uh, lap 104 of 150. We'll see if he can bring her home. I, I tell you, you <laughs> He, he, once he said the word confident, uh, it kind of brought back an old saying that my dad used to knock me down a peg or two every now and then. <laughs> he used to say confidence is what you feel before you fully understand the situation. There is a lot of racing yet to go. 46 laps indeed. Not taking anything from Brody Falker. I cheer for the guy every single week. I'd like to see him do well, but stay cool, calm, and collected. Keep that other C word in your back pocket. You show it when you're the one doing the burnout at the end absolutely so i wish him a ton of luck we'll see what he can do out here but man oh man what a race so far a lot of tight racing justin just doing phenomenal out there but we do have a new leader on our hands brody falliker gonna lead us back to green as we head to lap 106 of 150. you see these drivers getting ready uh lined up behind each other getting ready to make that move on the start see what happens yeah this time the, the 42 is he's going to be the the one first on that loud pedal the four justin asgock he's got to try to gauge when that 42 is going to go i'm not quite sure if he has a spotter or not behind him uh brendan book in the five he's up high in that target machine with with uh andrew wisdom in the one the deuce of josh taylor third on the high side and then the 11 of jimmy cocker Great starting five. sixth back in the green zone let's go a little, bit, a little bit of a backup on that high side, but the 42 gets going really, really well. The five into the back of him, and the two is going to fall back. But Brody Falaker out there leading. We're going to have Justin in second. The one car, that is going to be Andrew Wisdom. Let's see if he saved it. He somehow saved it. Made some contact with Brendan Book, I do believe, but they yeah. are still underway. Yeah, great save by the one. I mean, he's, he's a, he's a two-time series champ for a reason. A little bit of contact with the rear end of the five of Brendan Book and uh, just sent the one uh, kind of careening into that inside, but able to keep it off that inside wall. No harm, no foul. He's got a very fast car as he's proven week in and week out. 
42 still leading the way. Yeah, unfortunately for Andrew Wisdom, that puts him back to P12. So he's got an uphill battle to climb here, trying to make his way back to the top three once again. We'll see what he can do. If anyone can do it, Andrew can. But man, not what you want to see out there at this point in the race. Not at all. 2435, the fastest lap of the race. Shake and make purple to the one and only Brody Falaker. Not with any kind of draft. All speed from that number 42. The four cars staying right there with him. Justin Anascock says, oh yeah, hold my Red Bull. 2431, <laughs> fastest man of the night so far. Cool, calm, and confident Brody Falaker, but he is under attack with Justin underneath. And man, oh man. What a solid move. He goes out with a nose out ahead, slides up in front of Brody. Brody's going to answer with sliding down the track, going side by side once again. Can he take back that lead? Out of four, a little bit of a side or slide draft, able to complete it, but the 42 tried a little bit of a crossover, not fully able to complete that. Four is back in his rhythm, back in that same lane that he's been racing the lap after lap coming to lap 111 this time top four nose to tail josh taylor just offside in p5 now are, are these two gonna continuously battle out we've already seen that we've had one caution here but i don't want to kill my tires if that's going to be the only one we have you can't waste your tires and continuously battle justin for that lead you have to say save something for the end so I don't know, it's kind of a fine line. Am I gonna battle it for the lead or am I gonna keep close to him, keep everyone behind me and then battle it out when it really matters? If I'm the four, I'm really just gonna stay, uh, stay right where I am. I'm not gonna run away. Kind of like what he was talking about, what he learned between stage one and stage two. I think the 42 might be trying to pressure him to go faster and faster. So the 42 is gonna, you know, hope that the four uses up his stuff, Brendan Book, Kind of holding right there in P3. Jimmy Cocker, he's been inside. It seems like the top five all night long. Josh Taylor, excuse me, Josh Taylor finished stage one, second, still running P5. And look at this, P6, Jonathan Jurgensmeyer. Yeah, Jonathan Jurgensmeyer making his way up 15 spots from where he started. So he is still clicking away at those spots and making his way up front. But man, oh man, great job for him. And John Honeycutt. He is up here in P8, so he's doing a solid job, too. Meanwhile, uh, Andrew Wisdom, he's still trying to get back those spots from earlier on. He's going to be P7. Yeah, I, that, I mean, that guy, I, I swear, if he started at the rear of a race, it would be absolutely amazing to watch him navigate his way through traffic. Uh, I, I would actually send that dare to him. Maybe next week when we get to Road America, knowing how great he is at the road courses, I, I'm actually going to send that dare out to him. Starting the week, <laughs> don't qualify, and I want to watch you work your way through the field. I have no doubt by lap 12 or lap 13, whatever, uh, he'd be he'd be up in the lead. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take that away from everybody else. It's a pretty uh, pretty strong core group of drivers here in Shake and Bake, and each of them with the, you know skills of their own. Absolutely, they are all strong. Uh, within their own right and i'll tell you what there's gonna be a lot of competition out next week i'm just curious will it be enough for andrew wisdom as he is incredibly strong in those road courses but bring it back here to this oval we still have quite the battle justin anisogak uh, out here in first he's got brody falaker still right behind and take a look at this still side by side brennan book and jimmy cocker and he's got josh taylor right behind nowhere to go yeah, they've got both lines, you know, kind of bogged down. You you mentioned in uh, in the beginning just a little bit that you could go three wide here. While it's not recommended, you could try it, maybe put a little bit of pressure on somebody else. But yeah, the the 11 and the five, they got the main racing grooves kind of tied up. It would be probably in, in Josh's best interest to try to push that five as hard as you can and take the spot from the 11. It seems like he's pretty committed to that high side. Yeah, Josh Taylor all over the back bumper of Brendan Book. You can see on board just how dicey it can be with all these bumps and trying to make your way around track. And you've got 
uh, Jimmy Cocker right below you who is not going to give it up. And uh, he's confident in his car. You can tell he's looking solid, but he's got no help down there. So it looks like Josh Taylor is going to be able to get a nose out and he's going to take over that spot to P4. Jimmy Cocker goes fifth. Yeah, then the P6 got uh, Jonathan Jurgensmeyer, Andrew Wisdom still staying right there in seventh. He might be, seems like he might be stalled out just a little bit. John Honeycutt in eighth. Riley Rosenbrook, P9. Jeff No cracking the top 10 in Once that TJ team number 14. Yeah, how about that? A top 10 for him so far. 120 of 150. Let's bring it home with another top 10 for him. That would be awesome. Luke Allen sitting P11 right on the outside. So it is very possible that he can make his way into the top 10 and He's just been doing a phenomenal job this season. He must love these cars, and I love to see it. We have Francis Hamilton in 12th. Uh, Jordan McGraw has fallen to P13 from where he started in P3. Matthew Gale, 14th. Tom Flitcroft, 15th. Talk about P16 up three spots since this race started. Jarrett Cardwell. A little bit of a battle going on between him and Andrew Sanford as Andrew Sanford takes P16. P18 is going to be Steve Maggio in that number 51. Had a little bit of an issue earlier. Same thing with Philip Bridgman, who currently runs in the 19th position. Kevin Dallator up nine spots in that 92 to hit P20. 21st is going to be Chuck Cody with Mike Papa Bear Campbell in 22nd. Meanwhile, we have in 23rd, Jacob Palmer. Joe Berg, 24th. 25th is going to be Jose Ruiz. A tough race for some of these drivers. Joseph Turley. It looks like he is going to be out of the race. But let's go back up to the front drivers. And they are still in a line on top of each other. No one is giving up anything, Pete. No, not at all. And going through uh, turns one and two, I actually saw the 42 up just a little bit higher than the four. Right now, absolutely all over the back end of that four Red Bull machine. Justin Anscott keeping it up high. Right now, 42 to his left rear. Still side by side. The 42 is going to have a little bit of momentum going into that corner. Will he have enough coming off? Because that high side, you get a nice run coming off the exit. And he's going to get that right there as we head into the next corner. Brody Falaker down below. And he's got no help down below. So we'll see what they can do. But man, still side by side. This battle is crazy, Pete. Absolutely. Saw the 42 really try a little bit of side draft on that number four last lap. This time still, Justin Anscott giving the 42 plenty of room, not really trying to pinch him down. Maybe worried about the bump side by side into turns three and four. The five of Brendan Book, the deuce of Josh Taylor and Jimmy Cocker back there in the 11. Loving what's going on, just hoping that they can race this all clean. Yeah, I'm bored with Brendan Book, and you can see he's got uh, a perfect view of what's going on in front of him, and he's thinking, you guys got to do something because I want to make it up here too. So uh, you see their single file, but man, oh, man, Brody Falker in the lead. Justin is not going to be happy about that. He's going to try to make something happen. Meanwhile, Brendan Book tries to go on the outside of Justin. Just not enough. Yep, there we go, side by side. Yeah, P P2 really, really busy right now. It seems like that's where all the action is up high. Five, two, 11 and company. Here comes Andrew Wisdom back into the mix. Where did he come from? Oh, Justin is gonna lose a couple of spots. P5 and he's got Andrew Wisdom right above him. So yeah, as you said, where did he come from? He is officially back and he is going to go after as many spots as he can, hopefully to get that win tonight with 22 laps to go. Not a lot of racing left, but Brody Falaker, with all that battling behind him, he has managed to put a gap over the remainder of the field. And it looks like it's going to be almost a second, which is what he loves to see. Now, Josh Taylor, he's got to try to catch up. Yeah, Josh Taylor, I mean, he had a very, very fast car in practice, had a fast car in qualifying, finished P2 in stage number one. It might have just been, you know, waiting for uh, for his time. And, man, um, he's, he's pretty fast. Last lap was a 25, uh, I'm sorry, 25-33. The leader's last lap is 25-22, a full tenth faster 
Brendan Book was a 55. Jimmy Cocker was a 43. Andrew Wisdom was a 39. Justin Anscock back with a 57. Slowest of the top six. Very interesting to see. I wonder if those tires are wearing on him. And we have Brody Falliker who was battling so long with Justin. How are his tires doing? I see Brendan Book into the wall a little bit. That's going to cost him a spot or two. So uh, he's going to fall behind Andrew Wisdom, who is officially P3. That is absolutely insane. So incredibly close to that wall, running that Larson line for just a quick sec. But man, oh man, these guys are just giving it their all. So how about the one of Andrew Wisdom? You know, made a little bit of contact with the five. I'm uh, sure just a, just a racing incident. Ended up going down uh, off the track onto the apron, able to save it. Maybe scrubbed a little bit of extra out of that tire. Tires were, I'm sure, all kinds of, of uh, upset with him. And here he is back inside the top three. This man just never, ever gives up one hell of a driver. That's why he's a two-time champ. I mean, it's so true, and I'm kind of curious. Is he running mad, or is he just saying, you know what, let's just put that behind us. I got a race to make up, uh, come back up here. So some of, some drivers run really well being mad, and then some just really mess up the race. I'm wondering which one he is right now. A lot of Savage out there in chat saying, Wisdom! <laughs> man, uh, I, I tell you, uh, the, the man is unstoppable. One last week. A two-time champ here in Shake and Bake during the cup season days. And uh, th there's, there's just no give. The guy is very, very strong. He's calculating. He's very fast. Knows how to control his car. Knows how to you know, steer out of adverse uh, situations. You, he, this is one car you don't see on a wrecker very often. You see a lot of time being given up by Josh Taylor. He fell from just a second behind to a second uh and three tenths so very interesting to see what Brody Falliker uh, did compared to what Josh Taylor did I don't know if he just got loose or what happened but Brody Falliker if he can keep this up he might get his first win here this season gonna be very very exciting to see we'll see what happens yeah Josh Taylor just plugged that outside wall with both uh, with uh, with uh, the, the front and the rear coming off a of turn two last lap that's gonna give Andrew Wisdom a little bit more hope on that p2 spot maybe try to run down that 42 you know we were talking so much about justin Anscock earlier right now that guy's all the way back in p8 i was just watching him a moment ago going into turn two the right side actually slid out giving uh giving a little bit of a smoke screen so that car very very ill handling right now eliza yeah not what you want to see but brody falliker has put a two second gap over p2 of josh taylor so uh you know he's he's he said what he said. He said, I'm feeling confident yep. and uh, he, he likes his chances here tonight. And we're seeing that he's going to have a lot of traffic. So that's going to be the next big issue. Will people move over for him? Uh, either way, it might cost him some time, Pete. Yeah, I see Mike Pop Bear Campbell in that Mountain Dew number 71. Ooh. And I believe, yeah, that was close. And then I believe just ahead of him is going to be Jacob Palmer in that number 39 as he clears uh, Mike Campbell on the high side. Next one's gonna be the 39, uh, but look at the gap now, 1.8 seconds over Josh Taylor. Yeah. That 42 is just really, really strong. Kinda right where he's been all night long, uh, in that middle line, unless he, he was pinched down low earlier. Yeah, it still costs him a little bit of time just because you have to run a different line around lap car. So that did cost him some time. Uh, just under two seconds behind Brody Falliker is going to be Josh Taylor. But we'll see if he can't maintain that. 11 laps to go. He makes his way past Jacob Palmer. If I see cars in front of me and I'm Brody, I'm telling him, stay up high. If I want to run down low, I'm saying stay up high. If I want to run up high, I'm saying take the inside. Uh, I'm trying to make these drivers go where I don't want to be. Absolutely. I mean, I, I was just watching Josh Taylor pulling as much of a draft off of the 71 of Mike Campbell before finally pulling low. You know, Andrew Wisdom stayed right there. Then you see the 11 of Jimmy Cocker still sitting inside the top five. Brendan Book rounding out the top five in the fifth spot. 
Yeah, but he's under uh, attack from Jonathan Jurgensmeyer, who's trying to get up in the top five. And it looks like he's going to make that happen. So, man, oh, man, what a race. And it looks like John Honeycutt going to join on that battle, making his way, sliding up uh, into P6. So, great job. And, man, Savage showing the love for Andrew Wisdom. Uh, <laughs> Maddie saying, <laughs> Lord Savage. <laughs> Yeah, big thank you to, uh, to to Maddie. She actually hung out with me all night last night during the uh, the turndown for what 80 lapper from Pocono. Kind of stuck there in chat and you know keeping me company and talking a little bit of uh, Pocono trivia and whatnot. So Maddie, again, big big thank you. And also Chloe Goat. In case I didn't get a chance to thank you, big uh, big appreciate you. A uh, big appreciation for you for uh, following my channel also. Very, very nice. You got you to gotta spread the love. And uh, Pete, if you don't follow him, be sure to give him a follow. Pete, 1975, repeat 1975. So be sure to give him a follow out there and show him some love. But seven laps to go. Brody Falliker, take a look at this. Two and a half second lead over the remainder of the field. And he's coming up on more traffic. I do believe that's going to be Chuck Cody and that 31 machine. Man, oh, man. Uh, he wasn't lying when he said he's feeling confident, Pete. Yeah, no, and and he's he's proven it. When you can when you can back up what you're saying, like what he's doing right now, you can use any kind of words you want. With uh, like you said, with a two and a half second over Josh Taylor and climbing, um, yeah, he's uh, he's feeling pretty confident, and that car is backing it up. I do believe this will be his first win ever for SMB, if I'm not mistaken. I wish I could have had some stats that I could pull up, but. I am like 99.9% .9 sure that it will be his first win ever for SMB, Pete. So super excited. Five to go coming up on four. Here we go. Let's see if he can get it, can't get it done. Yeah, if he doesn't have one other win, I'd be I'd be surprised. I know he's been, you know, the groomsman. I won't say bridesmaids uh, for, <laughs> for him, but he's definitely been the groomsman uh, many, many times or the best man, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it'd be it'd be a big shot in the arm for team FIWB but especially for Brody Falker as we come to three to go yeah three to go and speaking of P3 we got Jimmy Cocker in third and uh, man this battle for fourth is just getting crazy they were on top of each other but take a look we have wisdom in fourth Jonathan Jurgensmeyer in fifth and John Huddycutt in uh, six so these guys very very close on top of each other and Brody Falker just I don't know what he's got under that hood but it is to almost three and a half seconds in front of Josh Taylor sitting P2. So whatever he's got, uh, bring that car to every single race, Brody. <laughs> there you go. Looks like John Honeycutt really just staying right there in the line behind that double O and the one trying to pull whatever he can. Uh, but this battle back there, as you mentioned, uh, for fifth, four, I'm sorry, fourth, fifth and sixth, very, very strong. But Eliza, white flag is up. White flag is in the air, and Brody Falliker is still leading the field with three and a half second gap over second place. He's got the uh, another car in front of him that's going to be, I do believe, the 92 machine. So we'll see how he makes his way around, but all he has to do is come around this corner, bring it home, and he is going to be the winner here at Rockingham. Let's bring him on home across the line. Here we go, Brody Falliker, your winner here at Rockingham Speedway. Congratulations to him. We've talked about it, Pete, so many times. I'm so excited for him. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I pulled for, for this guy season after season. Good to see him put that Chevrolet in victory lane again for himself and for all of Team FIWB. I believe there's going to be a party tonight in Rockingham. Absolutely. We're seeing him celebrate with teammates and everyone just saying congratulations to Brody. What a phenomenal race. I mean, just the lap times he was putting out there. And by the time the race is finished, he's got three and a half seconds. Brody. You win here tonight. Congratulations here at Rockingham. Uh, what a race. Let's see you do some celebrating. But man, how'd you get it done tonight? I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I drove as hard as I could, um, especially after getting, a, uh, getting around the four. I just wanted to stay out in front. Uh, you did just that and you had a phenomenal night racing and I gotta I gotta confirm is this your first win 
uh, in SMB? This is my second. Your second, that, okay. Uh, I think I have the closest finish in here uh, with beating out Holzer at Vegas. Very nice. You're that right, is you're right. that yep. is right. I do remember that. Oh, crazy! So we're getting it done in Xfinity. I have to ask you too. How are you liking these Xfinity cars? Uh, I I like them honestly. Uh, the next gen was my bread and butter, but you know, <laughs> uh, I seem to be doing pretty well in these cars. I would say so. I know uh, the first couple of races, yeah. The Cup Series, you were up there all the time. We saw it happening, so the Xfinity race. Here we go, we bring it home. So everyone celebrating with you, that is absolutely awesome. Huge congratulations, enjoy that win tonight. Yeah, thank you. They've been waiting, they've been waiting a long time for me to, you know, <laughs> break the dry spell. Heck yeah, that's awesome. Love to see it. All right, Pete, let's take it over to Josh Taylor, bringing it home, P2. Josh, it's Pete. Congratulations on this runner-up. You finished uh, the first stage. Runner-up second was a little bit a little bit further back. But when the push came to the shove, it seems like the long run was your bread and butter. Walk us through your race and this podium finish, sir. Oh, yeah. I, I felt like I wasn't aggressive enough on uh, the stage two there. And I kind of got stuck back in traffic. And passing is really hard at this track. And, um... Yeah, I wish I could have been a little bit closer to uh, Brody, but I, I just had to pass pass a couple cars, and it just hurt that right front too much, and just got a little tight there at the end, and he just kind of, you know, set sail there at the end. Definitely a phenomenal race for you all the way around. Really going to help you in the points. Next week, we head to Road America. Is that a track a little contention, or you think you uh, think you're feeling pretty pretty comfortable there? I've raced there before, but, you know, I'm not the best road course racer, so we'll probably get there and, you know, do some practice and maybe try to contend for, like, a top 10 or something um, and just get out of there, you know, without losing a bunch of points. All right, buddy. Well, congratulations on your podium finish this week. We'll see you next week. Appreciate that. You got it. Eliza, Jimmy Cocker in that number 11, also Team FIWB on right? number, uh, yep, Toyota. Yeah, we have two FIWB teammates up here in the top three, so a great night for you guys. Jimmy Cocker, take us through your race. You gained eight spots to bring it home P3. How was your race, and how'd you make it up here? Uh, it was pretty good. I felt like it was very loose, but apparently I'm good with loose race cars. Uh, this is the track I was talking to you all in the booth yesterday, that or uh, last week, that this was a track that I was looking forward to. And, I mean... <laughs> I learned a lot from Brody. He's the one who kind of coached me around this place, and that's the only reason I've finished anywhere near the top five. And, uh, I, I mean, yeah, uh, that's really about it. You have Sandy out there cheering for you in chat, but, man, what a finish. And I'll tell you what, your points. You gained 17 spots in the point standing, so this is only going to help that. Uh, but you called it. You said that you like this track and you do well, so it's great to see you out here in the top three. Xfinity car. Uh, we talked about it. How you feeling with it? And uh, what do you think at Road America? I'm loving the Xfinity car. Not a big fan of Road America. That's <laughs> a road course that I really struggle at. And I know Brody's good there too. So you might be looking. I at would it not say that. Too. Yeah, <laughs> yes, you are. You're good there. And a couple uh, other FIWB guys might be uh, in contention, but I, I doubt I will. Well, I'll tell you what, the FIWB guys are on fire, and it's great to see you guys racing out there every week and uh, getting those top 10. So congratulations on a top three, Mr. Jimmy Cocker. It's great to see you up there. Appreciate you. All right, Pete, next week we called it Road America. It's going to be a fun one. Uh, we know Andrew Wisdom is going to be a tough <laughs> one to beat. He sits P4 tonight. What do you think we're going to see from him next week? Um... I, I'm officially placing the dare to start in the rear with the <laughs> gear and have to pass everybody under green flag. Cautions are not normally a thing on the road course races. We'll have to see how it all works out with the stage breaks and rack and stack and everybody back up. But Eliza, phenomenal race this week. Waiting for next week. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one. We'll see you guys next week at Road America for 34 laps. Uh, same time, same day, Monday at 8.20 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you so much, and a huge congratulations once again to Brody on his win. You guys have a great night. Thank you for tuning in. You guys are awesome. Take it easy.